Assalamu alaikum everyone and welcome to another lecture about research methodology. Today we'll try to tackle uh, the first and the most important step in research, which is the problem. Right, the research problem. Of course, first we need to define what a problem means. Uh, the concept of problem in research, uh, what it uh, implies or signifies. So, generally, problem is defined as a difficulty uh, that is uh, encountered, an obstacle difficulty encountered uh, uh, in the course of research, whether within its theoretical or practical situations. Right, whenever we have difficulty, an obstacle, I don't know, uh, uh, contradiction, complication, right, uh, uh, controversial uh, phenomena, so all these represent to us a problem that should be studied, all right, of course, methodically and objectively and scientifically, right, so here, when we refer to a problem of research, we refer to two aspects of it. Whether it is an obstacle, right, to be uh, overcome, overcome, uh, like what Geoffrey uh, defines it. Uh, he defines problem as an obstacle to be overcome. All right, means a problem to be solved. All right, or resolved. All right, or also second aspect. It's a kind of a question to be answered, or as uh, Townsend defines it, a problem is a question proposed for an answer or solution, or solution. So all these all right, terms can be uh, used as synonyms to research problem, right? I mean, a question, obstacle, difficulty, uh, I don't know, uh, maybe uh, a kind of uh, something which is controversial, problematic, and so on, and so forth. The components of a research problem. What makes up a problem in research? So here, as we know that a researcher should be uh, well versed and should have insight clear to be able to uh, understand all right uh, and also isolate this problem or this phenomenon or this situation or this other uh, obstacle he is encountering in the course of his study right also this insight also enables him to uh, identify and find out those factors which lead to the creation right and uh, existence of this or that difficulty. So, these components uh, should be known by the researcher, all right, in order to be able to localize his problem. And these components are as follows. First, there must be an individual or a group which has some difficulty or a problem. It means there will be no such problem without uh, an individual or a group of individuals uh, uh, who uh, face no uh, difficulty or no obstacle. There must be, okay, people, whether one or a group, community, society, right, for example, uh, who encounters, who, uh, don't know, uh, faces uh, such difficulty or obstacle or problem or, uh, don't know, uh, complication or things like that. Clear. Also, there must be some objective or objectives to be attained. All right, to be attained. Because if someone wants nothing, uh, there will be no problem and no research at all. all right. So, certain objectives, right, also will lead us to uh, uh, encounter, all right, uh, a problem and uh, conduct an investigation or a study about it. Right. Also, there must be alternative means for obtaining the objective or objectives one wishes to attain. 
does it mean? It means that there must be at least two means available to a researcher, for he has no choice of means. Huh? Uh, he can't have a problem. Right, he can't have a problem. Also, there must be, uh, if you can say, uh, some doubt. Yes, some doubt in the mind of a researcher, which incites him, which urges him to look for a problem and investigate it deeply. So here, there must be the doubt in, in the mind of the researcher with regard to the solution. Uh, he seeks to find its solution and to answer the questions that relate to it, right, of alternatives. This means that research must answer the questions concerning the relative efficiency of the possible alternatives also clear finally also there must be some environment or environments uh, to which the difficulty pertains or relates uh, the environment is a very essential right component of the research problem uh, where the researcher can uh, study it right uh, and study the factors which also uh, surround and accompany its occurrence in that environment. The criteria for a problem selection. Now, any researcher when he wants to embark on a problem to investigate it or question to answer it, he should take into account certain criteria. Right, and considerations that uh, he should, of course, uh, bear in his mind before he uh, conducts his research. Right, Kotari here highlights almost six criteria that should be uh, taken into account. These are first the subject of the research. Uh, should not be overdone, right? Not be overdone or exhausted, right? Why? Because they will find a kind, or this researcher will find a kind of difficulty to shed any new light on this topic or subject, right? So we should avoid overdone subjects, the ones which are studied from almost all its angles, right? Also, controversial uh, subjects should not become the choice of an average researcher. It means the researcher should not involve himself in uh, a subject or a problem that is beyond his abilities, beyond his scientific and, I don't know, uh, capacities and also competencies. Right, whether in terms of knowledge or in terms even of uh, research methodology to deal with this or that subject. Clear. Also, we should avoid as researchers what? Too narrow or too vague problems. Huh? These also should be avoided as dealing with them uh, will be a kind of dry study. Huh? Not find much to tackle or uh, talk about. Right, it's too dry, too narrow, and too vague and clear too. Right. Also, the subject selected for research should be familiar and feasible. It means we can apply to it the different uh, research methods. Right. So that's why the related research material for uh, or sources, all right, of research are within one's reach. Right. So here, the research problem or subject should be familiar, uh, uh, known, uh, I don't know, within the researcher's uh, scientific right, uh, real right, within his uh, range of ability to be investigated, to be, I don't know, uh, studied with the, uh, the different research tools he has, right, he has at his hands. Also, the importance of the subject, qualifications, and the training of the researcher also, the costs involved, money also, right? Financial aspect of research also. The time also factor, time challenge are few other also criteria 
that must also be considered in selecting the problem. You mustn't select what is beyond your capacity, either in terms of uh, scientific qualification, in terms of money, in terms of time, in terms of, uh, I don't know, methodologies, you must write. And you can apply, comparing to what you can't apply, what you can what you can't, uh, I don't know, employ, uh, and so on and so forth. If you can handle just descriptive research and uh, exploratory one, okay, and you are unable to conduct, for example, experimental study, so don't opt for experimental study. Go and write, write your search for a problem which suits right, your uh, capacity and your uh, abilities with regard to uh, those descriptive rights and uh, exploratory uh, issues you can handle. You can handle. Also, selection of a problem must be preceded by a preliminary study. Huh? Sometimes this is necessary, right? For example, uh, and required uh, from the researcher before he conducts a research. Huh? For example, he uh, does what you call pilot study, right? in order to uh, check whether this problem and this research right, is feasible right, to continue and to widen its uh, scope and range. Right. If he finds so, right, he will continue, right, I will continue sorry, and uh, embarks on this research. If he finds it's something beyond capacity, of course, here he should change his problem right, and opts for another uh, research problem right, to be investigated and studied. Thanks.